let's start with the game that's just finished. Spain 3, Croatia 0. Ali, I want to start with you. Before we even get to the game, what were your thoughts on the team selection? Kukurea was preferred to Grimaldo at left back and the youngest ever starter at a European Championship, Lamine Yamal. What do you make of that, Ali? Uh, Lamine Yamal was probably the best player on the field. So, and I just, for anybody who hasn't seen Lamine Yamal play, or didn't see Lamine Yamal play this season for Barcelona, you wouldn't miss the fact that he was indeed the best player, certainly offensively, for Barcelona this season. And what was a very disappointing season for the club, it was a very good season for him. And that's why he's on the field for Spain. It's not because it, it's a cute story. It's not because Luis de la Fuente wants a storyline for us to talk about. It's because Lamin Yamal has earned his right to play in this national team because he's, he gives this team a different dimension in the attack. And in fact, if, when you have Lamin Yamal on the right and Nico Williams on the left, now you have speed on both sides, which is not something that Spain has had traditionally. It's a team that usually bases their success on their quality of their possession. But now you can have possession with a purpose going forward, stretching the field. And when you stretch the field, then that creates space underneath for some of their skilled players. So now Pedri can get his head up and he can find a pass. And now Fabian can add himself into the attack. Rodri can set the tempo of the game. They have options in the attack on the, on the outside, certainly with speed, that give this team a different look. Lamin Yamal was outstanding today. Mm. As for Mark Cucurella, I'd rather not focus on him. Because guess what? <laughs> he wasn't needed one way or another. And when he was needed, he made a goal, goal line clearance. So if you want to criticize that, Mark, go ahead. I'll focus no. on the big performance by Spain, convincing performance, Lamin Yamal, Pedri, Nico Williams, Morata, Fabian Ruiz, Rodri, a thorough performance from Spain. The only low light, if indeed we're going to get critical, is Unai Simon. He, with his mistake, could have made this into a game that was never really a game. And I'm not focusing on this game in particular against Croatia. I'm, saying, I'm just saying in general. When you look at where the weak points for Spain could be in this tournament, I would say that Unai Simon is a big question mark. And it's not something that I'm just saying because of the mistake today. It's because he always has some sort of mind-numbing mistake, mind-boggling mistake in him. He's got to cut that out if Spain are serious about winning this tournament. OK, we've got a golden boot behind you. We've got medals. We've got trophies. We've got trinkets. We've also got a ball, a soccer ball behind you, Ali. And LME... Croatia didn't see any of a ball in the first 15 minutes. Spain didn't let them get it. Yeah, no, they didn't. It was uh, pretty much what Ale, Ale said, which is, you know, we're talking about a Spain team that's uh, transitioning itself under Luis de la Fuente into a more direct, more vertical team. The possession-centric, the, the culture of trying to control the game from keeping the ball is still there. But now, because you have Nico Williams, because you have the wonderful Lamine Yamal, you're now stretching the game and becoming more direct and actually easing off the pressure of Alvaro Morata, which is exactly what happened in the goal. Obviously, Fabian Ruiz with that wonderful through ball, Croatia gave them an ocean to go through. But I think Morata now feels a little bit calmer in front of goal because they, he knows there are options. And of course, Lamine Yamal with that amazing cross. And as Ali said, we have seen it over and over with Barcelona this past season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a wonderful representation of what Luis de la Fuente can do. And actually, it's not new. It's been a project that's been working for a while now. He obviously has worked with many of the players in the under-21 section, in the under-19s as well. So he knows that he needs to revolutionize itself. By the way, about Cucurella, I actually think that one of the reasons, what I don't think, I know that it's a fact that La Fuente likes to start him over Grimaldo specifically because of some of the things that you saw today. He's gritty. He's kind of no-nonsense. And yes, it's not always pretty to see, specifically in keeping the ball, but he gives you that grit, that determination that you always see from Carvajal on the other side. So that's one particular uh, focus from the Spanish side. Listen, I went on Sports Center yesterday and I'm very, very high on Spain, specifically for this type of reason, because now they're not just about the plan A, they're also about the plan B. I think things are gonna get difficult, of course, naturally. And by the way, Croatia did have 16 attempts, five on goal, which were the same as Spain as well. So there are there is room for improvement specifically the moment Spain loses the ball. 
But make no mistake about it, this Spanish side is no longer just your beautiful piece of art on the wall that you can keep the ball and not have a, you know, a conclusion, an after effect. Now you have it. So as long as they keep doing that, as long as they continue to be aggressive and be more direct and understand that the game's not always going to be pretty, then it's going to be good news for Spain. A good win, fantastic from La Mina Mal. La Mina Mal is unbelievable. 16 years old, and he, it doesn't even phase him. He doesn't even play like a 16-year-old. It's amazing to watch. C congratulations to him and, of course, Spain for winning 3-0 against Croatia. 16 attempts, you said, for Croatia, which is 16 more than Scotland. But <laughs> don't want to go there. We don't have to go there, there, my friend. Do, do it's not, okay. Don't want to go there. Because I, I want to talk about Spain. I thought I was really impressed by the Mali. In the 29th minute, Fabian Ruiz with a delicious through ball. And he times he's run really well. The defenders played him on, Alvaro Morata. The one thing that a lot of us, certainly you guys on ESPN FC, have spoken about is how many chances he needs before the ball ends up in the back of the net. One chance, one goal. He needed that, didn't he? That was the perfect start, Ali. And that criticism of Alvaro Morata is a fair criticism. It is, yeah. It's what we have seen from him while he has scored a bunch of goals for Spain and has scored a bunch of goals in the Euros for Spain. And, and you kind of get the sense of, but there was more there. There was more on the table for Alvaro Morata. Uh, and, and so, yeah, when you think about the prospects of Spain in this tournament, we get excited about La Mina Mal. We get excited about the idea of speed on the opposite side with Nico Williams. But you also have to be realistic and, and, and really evaluate what's in front of Spain. And if indeed they have these big goals as to what they're going to do in the tournament, Alvaro Morata has to be scoring goals consistently. And today, what I like about his performance, not only the goal that he took it so very well, is the willingness to consistently have a threat of running in behind. That You're getting that on Yamal on one side, you're getting Nico Williams on the other, but that you can actually run in behind through the middle, which mm -hmm. you don't always see with Spain, and you don't always see with Alvaro Morata. It's a guy that should use that more often in his game, but so many times he comes to the ball instead of actually spinning and running in behind. Now, just the ability for Spain to even look for the pass in behind, that in itself is a development. Because if you go back to the World Cup and you go back to the game against Morocco, it was pass to A, to B, to C, to D, and back to A, to mm -hmm. B, to C, to D, and never in that direction, never over there, never towards you, Mark, never towards LME. It was always sideways and back and sideways and back. It's in like an umbrella when they get to the uh, final third. In this case, Fabian Ruiz actually takes a touch forward and his first look is forward, in behind. Let's threaten now. To be fair to Spain, to be fair to Fabian Roy, to be fair to Alvaro Morata, there was plenty of space to play that ball. And then maybe we direct the conversation towards Croatia and what their own, the big question, where are the center backs? Well, nowhere to be found. But the truth of the matter is that at least Spain is looking for it. They're threatening with it. And when you threaten with that, then the, 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 the effect of that, the byproduct of that is that now you're going to have space because it pushes the defense back. It pushes that yeah. back line further back to where now you can get your tricky guys underneath and they can get involved and now they're going to have more space to play so even if you don't complete the pass the fact that there is a threat to running behind that allows you to create space underneath Alvaro Morata gives you that but more importantly again if Spain is going to win this thing if Spain is going to go on a deep run if indeed they're going to achieve the things that they think they can achieve he has to be in the middle of scoring goals inside the 18 yard box let me on that point from Ali, the third goal just before halftime, it's a delightful ball in from Laminia Mal and goal machine Danny Carvajal follows up his Champions League goal with another one here. Was this a case of you thinking that this is really good from Spain or this is really poor from Croatia or a bit of both today on the whole? I think it was a bit of both because I think Croatia expected um, a few things. One, because they saw Nico Williams and Lamine Mal starting in this game, they thought that Spain are naturally going to stretch this game. Obviously, Lamine Mal likes to really come from outside in. He also likes to penetrate inside as well as Nico Williams as well. So what happens is when you stretch this game, Croatia, specifically the likes of Gavardio, they're, they, they're, they're, pay they're paying so much attention to, to, to those uh, you know, angles that the problem is now that you're leaving yourself open in other situations, hence the goal, as Ale was saying. Now that you have this through ball attack and Alvaro Morata feels confident because he has runners next to him, then that game now sort of multi-diversifies itself. It becomes more of a 4D, 3D angle-like. Lamine Yamal, here's the thing about him. 
if you watch this game back, he was very, and this is something that we have seen in the course of the season, he's a very patient player. Obviously, uh, he got caught offside a couple of times, but I'm talking about in terms of what he's going to do the moment he receives the ball. So that cross that he does to Danica Rahal is due to a buildup of patience. He's so quick. He's excellent on turning just inside out when he has the ball, but he's also very smart about knowing when to cross it. And it was a wonderful ball. And as you mentioned, Danny Carvajal can come in from anywhere. So I think it was a combination of both. Also, let's talk about Croatia for a second, right? The largest defeat in a Euro game, uh, matching a 3-0 loss, uh, you know, since 1996. But when you look specifically at that midfield, back in the day, you can rely a lot on Luka Modric, one of the greatest players the game has ever seen. Right. And I'm not taking anything away from him. And he knows this himself. He's not the same player he was five years ago. He's not the same player he was three years ago. He can still obviously deliver. He is such a wonderful playmaker. But when you play for Croatia, Croatia rely on him a lot when the chips are down. And today what happened was the chips were down a lot. Spain were controlling so much that you need answers from anywhere else. I thought Kovacic had a poor game. Rosovic as well, allowing Spain to do whatever they wanted. And when Luka Modric is not fully taking the lead control, at least in certain situations, then that's what happens. And so what you're seeing right now is a revamped Spain with a plan A, a plan B. Just like Ali said, they're not going side to side anymore. They can go vertical. They can really push that line. And Croatia, I think, got one caught off guard of that. But at the same time, because they themselves like to keep the ball, it just wasn't happening. And you cannot rely on Luka Modric for 90 minutes anymore. You have to do something a little bit more, and it didn't happen. So it's a combination of both to me as well. By the way, Alvaro Morata, 31 years old, right? You can tell me he's 20, and I'll believe him. That man never ages. He looks beautiful, Speaking, doesn't he? Fantastic. Speaking of ages, Croatia under 30-somethings, Ali. Is this a tournament too far for that, or is it far too early to write them off? Uh, well, I'm concerned. If I'm a Croatia fan, I'm concerned because I think what we saw today was a team that at times looked old and mm. looked like they couldn't quite get around the field. And it, it's surprising to see, not that Modric is starting, because he, 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 quite frankly, as long as he plays, he starts for the national team. But the legs, if indeed you're going to play Luka Modric, then you need a different type of legs through that midfield. Uh, so somebody or a player that is capable of covering the spaces. And, and Brozovic is a guy that right now, currently, if you speed up the game, he can't keep up. And Kovacic is not a guy that is really going to naturally defend and really get stuck in in a tackle. And so if you're getting outplay by the numbers of Spain and you're getting outrun by the change of pace that we've already mentioned from Spain, this newly found change of pace, then you're going to need legs to get around. And I just don't see that Croatia has that. And beyond that, I think what's even more concerning, because the players are who they are, and whatever age they are at this point, look, that's what's available, so let's make the best of it. But in order to make the best of it, you at least have to have a threat going forward. And while mm -hmm. they have, may have had the attempts that LME was referring to, honestly, they got dangerous once, a couple of times in the second half, and that's about it. In terms of the totality of their attack, it's a lot of maybe, kind of, sort of half chances. And who's going to finish that? Ante Budimir? Is he the answer? Mm. Well, I don't think so. And But you look around and go, well, whatever is left, for, whatever is left over of Kramaric, is he the answer? I don't know at this point in his career. And so I'm looking at a team that has a shortage of talent in the final third that is depending on that midfield to drive them forward. But that that midfield, as we've already established, doesn't quite have the legs. And so that puts a lot of pressure on that back line to be very solid, very clean. They were not solid nor clean today. And so, therefore, you find yourself with a 3 nothing beatdown. And it was every bit of 3 nothing. Uh, yes, they had a couple of chances in the second half, but that's more out of desperation than the actual development of the game. 3 nothing was every bit of 3 nothing, and could have been more had Livakovic not come up with a couple of saves. Yeah, Croatia had the ball in the back of the net near the end of the game from a saved penalty and then a follow-up, but there was encroachment and the goal was chalked off. Mm -hmm.